Hello and welcome back to our KSP career and in today's episode we will be launching the Moon Robotic Explorer. So it's actually very very similar to the previous uh, robotic explorer that we did. This is just explore the moon with the probe. So this is the mission that we have been doing and like I said, previous episode was, or I think an episode or two ago, it was a Minmus lander that went and deployed the communications network around uh, Minmus and did everything there. And this will be doing the same around Moon. However, we needed to do some tiny changes. And as you have seen in the previous episode, we've just replaced that fuel tank with a bigger one. And that's pretty much it. But with that being said, we are on our way to the Moon. Standard ascent as always, phenomenal ascent, everything going perfect and I'm really really happy that we will be doing that. Great, 45 and ascending and yeah, then we will, so the plan is, first part of the episode is going to moon, establishing an orbit, deploying the communications network and then we will be landing a lander and returning it back to the Kerbin after it has performed some science. After that, we'll see where we'd go take it from there, but that's the plan for today anyway. Like in the Minmus episode, I was thinking of just going directly to the surface of Moon. However, there's a lot of risk associated with that because the stakes are high. We are out of money. We need some cash and uh, we need this mission to be successful. And the Moon Relay Network, although it's better than the Minmus one, it's still far from ideal, so I really didn't want to take a gamble on it. Rather, better deploy everything, have everything available, and then let's do it. You know, 800 meters per second. And this actually episode took so long time to render. Let me know, guys, if you're really enjoying this when I will be, you know, deploying a lot of satellites. I put them many screens on the same time. Sometimes it can get confusing. Sometimes for some people it might not be that good. But I figured, rather than just showing you one after the other, uh, simply let me know what we, how would you like it. Would you like me to show like these four screens at the same time, or just show you one of them and say, well, the other three are following the same pattern? Let me know in the comments below how would you like me to present such type of content where I have a lot of satellites deploying same time. I don't want to waste your time, and ultimately, you know, let me know. All right, so we're going for the moon periapsis and uh, we will be doing the burn, uh, which will be a total 835 meters per second. There we go. Going on the next stage. Now, this one doesn't have a lot of thrust to weight. It's 0.6, but it's decent enough and it will get us where we need to go. The whole purpose of this is to get us uh, inserted around moon and then the, the satellites have enough delta V to do maneuvers on their own. We don't, we don't really need the main craft to do, you know, the maneuvers. And look, moonrise above Kerbin, beautiful. There we go, 150 meters per second. By the way, guys, I'm just up because a lot of you have commented a few previous episodes telling me how much you're enjoying this and this is actually fun for you. I'm glad to hear it because as of lately, I've really been enjoying making KSP content and I mean, I'm, I guess I'm just super excited that the KSP 2 should be coming in 2022. I think from the financial report, they were thinking around Q3. I'm not exactly sure. I don't have any inf more info than you guys do, but well, let's hope there is. And if when it comes, I, ho I will be covering the bananas out of it for sure. Anyway. I was even thinking of making, you know, a sort of an update video. What do, you, what do we know about the KSP2? Let me know if you would like to see it. Anyway, we are coming to the moon and then we shall be seeing how much we have. We have, well, we have plenty. We have 3.6 thousand Delta V, which is more than enough. However, in this stage, we have a total of 647, which is not a lot but it will be enough to get us inserted around moon. So that's the whole idea of it. All right, we are coming in. There we go. Warning, Gravioli satellite. I don't care at this moment about Gravioli satellite. I couldn't care less. All right, right now, the only thing that interests me is to circularize around moon and then starting deploying the satellite. 
Okay, I'm just doing a little bit, you know, orbital inclination because I still want to be rather inclined uh, the first time that I'm launching these. And then the rest they can do, I mean, obviously. However, it doesn't hurt. Alright, then we come to the four screen, which you guys know and love, I hope at least. Well, if not, let me know in the comments. However, we are detaching our four probes, each in their own succession, and I have automated the, you know, deployment bind them to action group, so this time it's much easier as than before, just, you know, clicking the rest of the stuff. Uh, two of those will be going into the inclination that this craft has set. The other two will go in the opposite inclination, so that's the whole reason... I want basically two, you know, two shells, each of them containing two satellites. Now I'm talking almost like Starlink. Good golly. Anyway, uh, they should be in a roughly 500 kilometer orbit, which would be enough for the relays to pick up and for the antennas so that they can, you know, transmit. Uh, each of the satellites has roughly 730 meters per second. If you would like to see how they're assembled, then do check out my a Minmus robotic lander video. I will be providing the link in the description of this video. All right, so now it's just a matter of putting those satellites into their correct inclination and orbit, which should be happening soon-ish. And then we will be focusing on the main craft, getting it as low as possible, landing, and I'm even thinking testing the seismic sensors with some sort of impactor. And for the impactor, I'm actually thinking of using some of the old relay satellites, which basically, let's face it, they don't have relay antennas or that really do, do not doing jazz. So, <clears throat> now, let's see, just put making sure that each of these satellites are, and actually I'm guys using this rendezvous maneuver planner because what I'm doing, as you can see in the bottom left corner, I'm doing so that I make prepare like for a rendezvous, but rather than the target and the uh, Mycroft aligning on the same place, I'm making sure that they're exactly on the opposite. And that's how I'm actually <clears throat> securing that my two craft will be on exactly opposite sides when I deploy them. It's actually a nifty trick. I just It just came to me like a while ago when we were doing this. I figured might as well, you know, so I secure a rendezvous and just make sure that those two are on exactly opposite side of the orbit. Easy, you know, rather than calculating exact insertions and everything. I mean, I could do it, but it's a little bit more work than I would like to. Now we're coming back to the main craft and that one I would ultimately like to land in this crater, as you can tell. And I have make a correction burn of 293 meters per second. I'm just putting it out there and I'm gonna burn it until we get our landing zone somewhere in that crater. Because I mean, that crater I don't think I've landed in before, so I could actually use some additional science, because why not? And yeah, so. There we go, we have a total of 2.9 thousand 2950 meters per second, which is more than enough to get us landed and also back. Should probably be enough to get us landed and get to Duna from here, but, you know, let's not push our luck. The mission says we have to go, and I'm gonna go straight into that dip that you will see over there. I'll probably not gonna land in the crater because I don't want to land on the slopey surface. And here I really love that my Kerbal Engineer is gonna tell me where the slope is gonna be where I'm landing. So altitude, terrain... The slope is not yet there because I'm all still too high up, because I'm still in space low. I'm killing my vertical velocity. There we go. Once we get closer I will get the slope readout for the landing site. But while I'm there, I'm just making sure that I kill as much vertical velocity as possible. I don't want to kill too much because then I'm wasting my delta V. But I want to kill enough so that I don't crash basically screaming into the moon. So, yeah. So, slope 27 degrees. Well, that's not really ideal. I, that means I'm probably gonna land on this crater wall or something. So, I'm gonna move just a little bit more eastwards because I want my slope ideally would be like single digit numbers, but if I can't, 10 is acceptable, but I mean 22, no thank you. Okay, 14 degrees, well, that's doable. 
I can do 14 degrees. All right. 14 degrees it is. It's probably on the slope on ascent. I really love the moon's, you know, surface, all cratery and stuff. It's actually hard to land on a decent spot, but it's actually quite nice landscape. It's more interesting. It's more dramatic. Yes, I, that dramatic is the word I'm looking for. So now small huffs and puffs. We are 250 meters above the surface. We can see our shadow. And I'm just trying to find a very, very low thrust setting that would set me down on the moon's surface gently. Remember, it's a slope, so we have to be a little bit careful. That we don't hit it too hard. Two meters, okay, good enough. Thankfully, we have suspension. All right, we have landed on moon, perfect. And now we're gonna just do contract parameter complete. 100K, thank you very much. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the experiment. See, we are... I just want to make sure that I conduct some experiments because telemetry report, seismic scan, collect laser data. Thank you so, thank you, thank you. I should have crammed more experiments there, honestly, guys, but yeah. Alright, so after those experiments are sent, we're gonna be taking off and going back. But while also, yeah, hold on. We have the seismic scan, which is running, good. We have the seismic hammer, which will be doing its own experiments, see? Toggle the hammer, it's gonna do tong 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 tong. Yeah, there we go, tong 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 tong, and science! Thank you. However, I know that the real seismic sensor can be activated with an impactor, and here is our old satellite which we were thinking it's called relay however this is not relay this is just basically nothing so <clears throat> since we now have our you know relay network mark 2 i figured i might as well use it for some other type of science i know where you you, you guys see where i'm getting with this right curb and rise enjoy it's the last one you're gonna get buster I mean, I cannot return it to Kerbin, so if I did, it would basically disintegrate into the atmosphere due to not having a heat shield, so I might as well sacrifice it for the greater goal of science. The only thing that would be stupid if, if I accidentally hit my lander with it, which I'm not gonna do. This looks like good place as any to conduct science. Little break! There we go. All right. Let's back, get back to our craft. I don't know if it recorded anything. Seismic scan, 36 out of 36. He did! Awesome! Now we're gonna go eastwards, retracting the landing legs, and time to return back to Kerbin. Beautiful. There we go. Making sure that we circularize. All right, let's do the, we've stopped the seismic scan and there is our other landers. We do have, you know, probes on the surface of moon. We have been there. We have even our you know, little rover over there. However, we are gonna go and launch this back to get a lot of cash, which we actually direly need. I'm a little bit confused that I'm getting now probes for Moon and Minmus. I should have gotten them long time ago, but I think once I uninstall the remote tech that my mod tree just basically this, or at least these contracts did reset for some reason. So I even have the, you know, uh, first Kerbal to orbit, which I've launched in the previous, no, sorry, not Ker first Kerbal in space and then to orbit. I mean, we already did this. However, it didn't update for some reason. I don't know why. All right, I'm putting down my Kerbin periapsis to some 40-ish, 38-ish, and we are gonna go and make the burn right about now. I'm just trying to capture the nicest angle so that we can all enjoy. There we go. And the burn is gonna take some 13 seconds, and it's gonna happen in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Oh, I really love how it looks. This is just gorgeous. All right, there we go. I think we just need to do a little bit of correction here. Let's see that we 
bring down our curb and periapsis to 38-ish, somewhere. There we go, perfect. Now all we need to do is sit back and relax until we get almost in the Kerbin's atmosphere, at which point I need to fold, you know, the solar panels, the antenna, and hope that, well, what was supposed to be of this craft survives the re-entry. Bye bye moon and thanks for the science. Gorgeous. I just, th these moments like these when I'm playing KSP, I'm, I'm, I'm just out of my mind. It's amazing. And there we go. Now let's get into the curb and it's gorgeous. There's something just about the space and exploration that, you know, captures the imagination of the humanity and I mean, there's no feeling like it. All right. Pointing the arrow, the, the, the retrograde, yes. Folding up the solar panels, thank you. Folding up this, and then we're gonna be hitting the atmosphere. I might as well actually use, I have almost 1000 meters per second delta V, which I'm gonna use to slow us down relative in the orbit. And uh, so we don't need to hit it with 3000 meters per second. We can hit it at say 2200 meters per second, and that's a lot less. It's almost coming back from the orbit. Ditch the rocket, I've just used the reaction wheels to nudge it a little bit out of the way if for some reason we hit that one, but it seems that it's gone bye-bye anyway. All right, heated re-entry after which we will be doing the landing. And as you can tell, I've put a larger heat shield than I need to, simply because of the solar panels and all these experiments. I really wanted to save everything what I do, so yeah, I, I really want to start retrieving the experiments back to Kerbin. Popping the chutes. Seems we are landing in a quite nice place anyway. Some additional science, beautiful. And then we will be do the landing. So guys, I mean, I would like to cordially invite you, if you are enjoying what I'm doing, to boop the like button because it helps me out a great deal. And if you haven't yet subscribed and seen many of my videos, maybe that's universe telling you that you should. I don't know. Let me know. Anyway, lots of science gotten and that brings us to the end of this episode with the vessel complete, contract parameter complete and the contract complete and lots more cash. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.